I will say welcome to our guests and welcome Jim. Are you ready to get us going? Let's get things started. Thanks for the introduction and welcome everybody. We are super glad that you can be join, joining us on this uh, on this Wednesday afternoon in the month of uh, in the month of June, or perhaps it's Wednesday morning in the month of June. Uh, so the title of our session is Building Braille Materials, and as Leanne pointed out, and momentarily we'll introduce a couple of our guests from APH, which we are super excited to have with us today. As far as our agenda, we'll do objectives, and then William will walk us through some of the elements of Braille Blaster, and then two new solutions that will be coming to APH quota a little bit later on in the summer, Pix Blaster and Page Blaster. And Sally will join us to talk a little bit about the Tactile Graphic Library, and then we'll bring it back to William to go over the Firebird Graphic Editing Tool and the Tiger Designer Tool, which will come along with the Pix and Page Blaster for building tactile graphics. As Leanne pointed out, you'll be with us for the next 1.5 hours if you'd like CEU credit, so we'll wrap up around one o'clock this afternoon. Uh, as always, we will provide you with some poll questions, and we do want to encourage you to drop your questions into the chat. We'll try to answer those as we go along, and then we will pause to let William and Sally answer those questions. So moving along, our objectives today are as follows. You, the participant or participants, will be able to describe the two software solutions pro provided by PIX, Blaster, and Page Blaster to make literary Braille documents. You, the participant, will be able to name the three spatial math problems that can be do, produced with Braille Blaster. And you, the participant, will be able to create an account and name the three categories of the tactile images that can be downloaded from the Tactile Graphic Image Library from APH. So joining us from the great state of Kentucky in the city of Louisville is William Freeman. He is an APH coworker of mine and Leanne's. He is a quality assurance specialist in the uh, technical product research group, as well as a Braille transcriber. And joining William is Sally Hart. She's another member of the APH team. She's a tactile graphic designer and works with accessible tests and textbooks with APH. And so without further ado, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna kick it over to William. William. The show Hello. is yours. Great, thank you. All right, so I'm sharing my screen now and I should have Braille Blaster up there for everybody. And I've already gone ahead and added some text. So it's not just a blank new screen, but we'll get to that in a moment. I'm not sure how much folks have heard of Braille Blaster. Hopefully you've heard of Braille Blaster. Uh, it is a free Braille transcription program available from APH. You can download it at brailleblaster.org. I hope that you've downloaded it before. I hope that you've tried it. We put out updates all the time. So if you tried it a year ago or two years ago, uh, you definitely wanna check it out again because we're always updating it, always improving it and responding to user feedback. So I'm gonna start by, so I've went ahead and added some text. Without text, it's hard to talk about Braille Blaster. It's all about text. And so I've just written the words, this is Braille Blaster, exclamation mark. And I did that in this middle view here. This middle view is the print view. And that's where you do all of the work that you're gonna do in Braille Blaster. And if you've used it before, you're gonna know all this, but I'd like to go ahead and review just the real basics of how to use Braille Blaster real quick. Open a simple document just to show how that works. And then we're gonna spend the, the majority of our time on the math. So I went ahead and I typed, this is Braille Blaster in the print view. That then gets translated in the other view next to it. This is arguably the most important view, the Braille view. And that's showing now in a, uh, a simulated Braille font with uh, shadow dots. And I'm gonna go ahead and type another line, a uh, new item, and I'm gonna make this a longer item to kind of demonstrate the relationship between the print and Braille views. So. This is a longer item and I am just going to keep typing and typing and typing. Uh, so now I've got some longer text and I could keep typing. That's all one line right now. I could just keep typing on and on and on until my computer ran out of RAM. Um, but that would be unnecessary. So I will not do that. <laughs> but now that I've got some more text and it hasn't translated yet. Okay, so it's just this one line in the print view. And now when I press enter, now it translates. 
And the reason it, it waits to translate and it's all on one line is each line corresponds from the print view to the Braille view. So this second line here, this is a longer item and I am just going to. It's the exact same as this, this line in the Braille view. This is a longer item and I am going, just going to. So it's the exact same print and Braille. And that's gonna be true whether your document is one line or three lines or you know a thousand page uh, textbook or something. And so the idea here is whether you're a Braille expert you know, you've been a transcriber for 20 years or you're just starting out with Braille, you can keep your focus in the print view, do your work, type your text, apply your styles, your emphasis, and know that those changes are happening print and Braille at the same time. And when you're done, you can then turn your focus over to the Braille view to proofread, check your formatting, finalize your document. So I'm going to add a third item. This is a third item. So now I've got, this is Braille Blaster. I've got my longer item, and then I've got, this is a third item. And what I want to do is just show you how to apply styles, then we'll apply some emphasis, and then we'll get into our simple document. So I've got my cursor on the second item. I could highlight it. I can put my cursor on it. I could highlight multiple items, but I just want to apply the style to this one item. So I just put my cursor on it. I go up to styles in the menu. I go down to lists, because what I want to do is I want to apply a list style to this item. So I go down to the category lists. Those are then broken down by level, because you can have multiple levels of list. But I just want a one level list. So I choose the style L13. So I go ahead and click that. And then that applies the style. And when it applies the style, multiple things happen. So it updates, you have this other view I haven't really mentioned yet, which is the style view. So previously everything was body text. Now it's L13. And then L13 is the style name. L stands for list. The one and three stand for the margins. So one, it starts in cell one, three, it then runs over to cell three. So the, the style view updates the margins in the print and braille views update, and then you get these blank lines. Now the blank lines come from uh, the rules of braille. The rules of braille, you put a blank line before and after a list item, and Braille Blaster knows that. So it is adding blank lines as needed so that you don't have to worry about making those changes. And if I then go down to this third item that we've created and apply the same style, uh, you'll see you'll see how Braille Blaster handles that dynamically. So I've got my cursor on the third item. I could go up to Styles, List, List 1 Level, L13, and apply the same style again that way. Or the very first item here is Repeat Last Style. So I can just click that item, Repeat Last Style, and it will repeat the last style that I've applied. I can also use the hotkey, which is what I will do. So the hotkey is Control-R on Windows. Command R if you are on Mac. And so by, a, by using the hotkey, I've applied the style, and now the blank line that was appearing between those two items is removed. So now Braille Blaster is treating this as one list instead of two separate items. And so it, you don't need that blank line anymore. So because Braille Blaster is handling your blank lines, adding and removing them as you update your styles, you can focus on the content. You can focus on the text and the other, the other many, many details that will come up uh, when you work with Braille. So I'm going to apply a heading style to this top item because there's another rule. You don't put a blank line between a cell five heading and a list. So I will go ahead. I've got my cursor on the first item. I'll go styles, heading, and then I've got the option cell five, cell seven, and centered headings. Go ahead and do cell five heading. And again, the blank line gets removed. So Braille Blaster is going to be adding and removing blank lines as you make your changes. I can always override it. So I can put my cursor here. I can press enter. If for whatever reason, you know, I'm a rebel, I want to break the rules, I'm not going to be contained, I can add and remove blank lines as I need to. And now I'm going to use my favorite hotkey, which is Control Z for undo. And then that, that gets rid of the blank line that I added. Now. This is just creating a new document. So you can use Braille Blaster to create a new document. I've, uh, I've added text, you saw me type. 
Uh, I applied styles. I can apply emphasis. So I could highlight Braille Blaster and I could make it bold, uh, italics, underline just by going to the emphasis in the menu. I could also use the hotkeys associated with each of those. So bold, control B, italics, control I. So I'll go ahead and highlight Braille Blaster, control B for bold. Uh, I could go ahead and highlight uh, typing and typing and typing, and I'll do uh, control U for underline. We've also got the uh, transcriber defined type forms from UEB. So those are, those are in their own little menu and sub menu. And then those are arranged one through five, the same as you'll find them in the UEB manual. Braille Blaster is the first Braille transcription program to be designed with UEB from the very beginning. And UEB is the default code. It's not the only code. We have UEB, EBAE, we have Nimeth version, so UEB with Nimeth, uh, Cherokee with Nimeth, and uh, US Spanish. All right, so once now that I've got this, I could emboss it. You know, I can go to File, Emboss. I can save it as a BRF or PEF. Uh, PEF, for those that don't know, is a, is a, it's basically like a BRF, but it's, it's used more in Europe and it's more related to graphics. And some embossers support it and some don't. And I could also save it as a BBZ file. So if I go to save, it'll save it as a BBZ file. And then I can, I can call it whatever I want, test file. And then I can share that with my friends, or I can emboss it directly on the Pix Blaster or the Page Blaster, which we'll cover a little later. All right. So that's a basic file. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this file, analyzing the text. So this is a Word file, and I'll go ahead and open it in Word as well. So here it is in Word. And I'm going to switch over to the draft view. And I've got it set up to show the styles in draft view. So I've opened analyzing the text. And this is just a regular Word file. This is a file made using the regular style ribbon of Word. So the very first item, analyzing the text, that's a heading one. Then we've got our paragraph that follows it. That's using the normal style. Uh, it has some bold. The bold was made just using the bold that you find up here in, in the uh, the home ribbon. So you can highlight control B. And then we've got our list. The list was made just by highlighting the text and then using this numbered list style also found in the home ribbon. And then after the list, we have the text performance task as a heading two. Again, regular word style. And then after that, writing activity persuasive essay as a heading three. And then three paragraphs, all with the normal style. So if I then open that in Braille Blaster, all of these word styles then become Braille Blaster Braille styles. So my heading one becomes a centered heading. So analyzing the text is now a centered heading. My paragraphs become body text. My bold is retained. Your emphasis is retained. That list, that numbered list, that is also retained. And we keep the emphasis that's there. Our heading two becomes a cell five heading. So performance task is now a cell five heading. Writing activity, cell seven heading, and then our three paragraphs. So this is a basic file, but I think it represents, you know, a common like worksheet or handout that you might want to create for your students or for your child or for yourself even. And it's so easy. You may not have used Braille Blaster. I hope you've used Braille Blaster, but if you haven't, you probably have used Word. So just go into Word, make your file, use the styles that are that come with Word. Nothing special, nothing new you have to learn or do, just the styles that come with Word. Save your file and then you can open it in Braille Blaster. And this file is basically done. Uh, there's really nothing you'd have to do to this file. Uh, the Braille page numbering is added automatically. You could go ahead and add new information to this if you wanted, but there's really nothing else that needs to be added. The file types that Braille Blaster can open, there are a lot. Um, so BRF, it can open BRFs for review or for embossing. Uh, BRL, uh, DocX, which we just covered, EPUB, which is the future of digital publishing. 
a lot of different variations of HTML, so website files, so HTM, XHTM, there's lots of variations there. Uh, the NIMAS XML files available from the NIMAC library. Every state has a NIMAC representative that makes these files available. Uh, they're, they're textbooks. Uh, if you need a textbook, you, you would reach out to your NIMAC representative and then they could get the, not the associated XML file for you. If you're not familiar, it's probably because someone else in your state typically handles that. So don't worry if, you're not, if it's not something you're really familiar with. But yeah, so there's a lot of file types. And I just wanted to kind of cover the basics, but my main point here is if you've never used Braille Blaster before, you should at least get started using it, uh, opening up your Word files and creating Braille quickly and easily. And then as you get more comfortable, you can do more and more. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and then let's jump into math. So the main thing with math is there's a lot of it. There's a lot of math. And there's not as many keys on the keyboard as you might need. So if you take a simple example, like one plus one, which I typed now, one plus one is easy. All of those keys are available on the keyboard. So there's not a whole lot I have to do there. But when you get to more complex examples, like two times two, there's no times key on the keyboard. And so that's why we've turned to ASCII math. So ASCII is a word you hear in our field some, and really you can think of it as just meaning the keys on the keyboard. So ASCII math is math created using the keys on your keyboard. So to make two times two, that's two asterisk two. And so this is gonna make uh, two uh, multiplication dot two. Now you'll notice I typed it and all I'm getting over here is two asterisk two, nothing special. So what I need to do is I need to tell Braille Blaster that this is math. So I highlight it, I go to math in the menu, and the very first item, math translation toggle, the hotkey is control M. So I'm gonna highlight it, I'm gonna use the hotkey control M, and now Braille Blaster knows to treat this as math. So immediately it gets, it gets highlighted in pink, and then the translation updates to two times two in UEB. We can do Nimeth as well, and I will do Nimeth in a moment, but first let's, let's cover some more ASCII math examples. So just real quick, uh, fractions. Uh, one half is just one slash two. So I just type one slash two, highlight, control M, and then I get one half. Uh, mixed fraction, one space, one slash two. Highlight, control M. Uh, exponent, x caret two. So that's x squared, highlight, control M. So I could have typed out a bunch of these as well. I could have typed out a bunch, highlighted them all at once, control M to make them into uh, braille. But I just did them one at a time as an example. Now, like we said at the beginning, you know, there's a lot of math and no one expects you to memorize all of these. And so we have, if you go into the math menu, we have the spatial math editor, or excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself, the ASCII math hub. And so the ASCII math hub, it's gonna open on the examples page. And this is kind of my favorite page because it has just about everything that you need to get started. And so we've got beveled fractions, uh, complex fractions, exponents, mixed fractions, uh, integrated natural log, and just lots of examples. And then over on the right, we have a text box where you'll do your editing. And above that text box is an image. And now this image is accessible. We make it using MathJax. So if you're using a screen reader, you can tab to it. And if you're using NVDA, VoiceOver, or JAWS, it will be able to interpret the math jacks and give you the appropriate uh, uh, voiced response or braille. So what's great, so I can take like the square root example. So I'll click the square root example, and then that's gonna populate my text box with the associated ASCII math and create the image above it. So I've got SQRT parentheses 64 close parentheses. So this is the square root of 64. Now I can edit this. So I can, I can highlight 64 and type 99. So now I'm doing the square root of 99. 
or you know, I could just delete it and do 123. Or I can highlight it and then I can go back to my examples and I could pick an example and that will populate where I've highlighted. So I could do, you know, this isn't a great example of math, but I could do the square root of x squared. So once you've populated your text box, you can start adding to it. So I could do the Taylor series, which is quite long and complex, <laughs> but then I can go in and edit it and make changes as needed. So I'm gonna simplify my example here. Go back to the square root of x squared. And so I've got what I want, and I'm gonna put my cursor in the print view, and then I've got down here, insert math, and then that inserts it, it automatically translates it as math, and I get the associated, um, the associated Braille. And I could also, I could go through the math I've already created with the previous math, next math buttons, and those populate the text box, and I could edit them as well by using replace current math. So the ASCII Math Hub is a good place to get started to learn about ASCII math. There's more than just the examples page. All the symbols are broken down by category, so you can review them. But let's get back into our print view. Uh, I said we do Nimeth as well. So I've got it in UEB. I've already made it in UEB. I'll go to settings, translation settings, go to my drop down, and I switch. As soon as I uh, click the drop down, it shows all the available codes. I'm going to go down to UEB plus Nimeth. Select that. Now I can either make it the default by clicking make default, and that'll be this document and all documents going forward, or I can just click okay. I'm just gonna click okay. And so it'll make just this document Nimeth. So click okay. Now my document is translating as Nimeth math, but um, you might notice there is an issue here. One plus one is still translating as UEB because we never told Braille Blaster that it is math. You wouldn't think so, but math is contextual. And so we just, we need you to take that last step and just tell us what is math and what is meant to be done as literary. If you're doing UEB only, it's not as big of a deal, but if you're doing UEB plus Nimeth, it's, uh, it'll come up like in this example. So I just highlight, control M, and now I've got one plus one uh, in Nimeth. So those, those are just some basic ASCII math examples. And so you can type, the whole idea here is that you can be creating your document, you can be typing your text, and then go ahead and just slip into math mode, type your ASCII math, and then go back to, to typing literary text. We didn't wanna have to burden you with this heavy user interface. So even though we have the ASCII math hub, you're not tied to it, it's a place to get started but we're not really imagining that you're gonna stay there the whole time. Also, if your document has, um, it's called LaTeX. Um, it's a, it's a, a code for creating math. If your document has LaTeX and you open it in Braille Blaster, that will translate automatically. And if you have a NIMUS XML file with MathML and open it, that will translate automatically. We get asked a lot about math type and so that is, that is really on our radar. We're looking at ways to make math type open automatically. And so this way you can be creating your document somewhere else, open it in Braille Blaster, and get all of your math basically ready to go as soon as you open your document. So that's definitely something we're looking at. So now I'm gonna switch gears. Again, we have so much to cover today. And we're gonna talk about the spatial math editor. So it's found under math in the menu is the spatial math editor. Go ahead and click that and open it. And I'm gonna to go to container type and set my container type for math templates. So what this is, is it's a way to make spatial math. And it, we've made it as simple as we can by just having it basically be, it's basically just text boxes. It's basically just text boxes, you fill them out, and then we do the heavy lifting uh, as much as we can. And this was a suggestion that came to us from our users that are TVIs. They really wanted this. And so it's something we worked out. And as of right now, we're the only Braille transcription program that can do anything like this. And 
I, I, you know, I personally, I hope the other guys borrow this idea. That's, you know, they have to come up with their own way of doing it, but it's the more math, the better. So, all right. So I've got my, my blank text boxes. There's an identifier text box at the top. That's for like one period, two period, the problem identifier. And then below that, I've got operand one and operand two. And so that's going to be my operands for my equation. And then my operator is a drop down. So plus, minus, and times. Division is a different type of template, and I'll show that as well. But for right now, I want to do operand one. I'm going to do 33. And then I'm going to keep the operator at plus, and I'm going to put in for operator two, three. Click insert, 33 plus three. And that gives me my spatial math. So now I can go back in. I've got my cursor on the item, math, spatial math editor, and I can edit this. I can change the, the operands. I can change the operator. I can go up to the menu solution. Right now it's set for false. I can set it for true. And then that adds a new box where I can put the solution. So for this, I've got operand one, 33, plus operand two, three. I don't wanna show off, but that is 36. And now I've got my solution, 33 plus three equals 36. I'm gonna make that joke one day and I'm gonna put in the wrong answer and I'm gonna look real stupid. But anyway, I've got my cursor on the problem. I go up to spatial math editor and now I can add another problem. So down here at the bottom, I've got row and column. So I can click next on the column field, and that gives me a whole new blank uh, set of text boxes for another template. So for this one, I wanna do uh, nine times four. So I just put in nine for the first operand, four for the second operand, and then I go over to the operator and I choose times. Now it's only gonna let you do the uh, the cross. You can't do the dot. That's because of the, the rules of Braille. So I pick the, the cross, put in my solution, which is also 36, click insert. And now I've got two problems, 33 plus three, nine times four, and my solutions. So I can keep going back. I could have done this all at once. I didn't have to do them one at a time like I did, but I just wanted to show how it works. There's different types of templates. So this is a simple template. There's also a fraction template. Uh, so you can do fractions. That one's a, a bit more complicated, a lot more text boxes. And then a division template. So I'll go ahead and open the division template. So for this, it's the same. You've got a identifier at the top and then the divisor and then the dividend and then the solution and the remainder. So it doesn't do the math for you. That is one thing. But let's do for the divisor, let's do three. For the dividend, let's do 10. So we're gonna do 10 divided by three. For the solution, that would be three with a remainder of one. Click insert, and now I get my math over here. So I've got my three, I've got my uh, uh, the d division uh, separator, and then I've got the 10. And then above it, the solution, there's the number sign for the three lined up with the number sign for the 10, according to the rules. And then I've got a blank space between that and then the three and then the remainder of one. So that's how I can make some spatial math equations for students. I can also go back to the spatial math editor and I can do, instead of a template, I can do a number line. So a number line, again, it's just text boxes. So the first text box is count by. That's gonna be the space between your numbers. So I'll do a count by of two. And then the next is the line start. Uh, I'll do a line start of negative two. And then the line end, I'll do that at four. And then I can do an interval. So I'll do an interval starting at zero and ending at two. So I've got a line starting at negative two, going until four with spaces every two numbers. So uh, two between each space. And then an interval starting at zero and ending at two. Go ahead and click insert, and then I get my number line. So it puts in the arrows on either end. I get my interval, I get my numbers, so negative two, zero, two, and four. Now the one thing about this is it is, it is strict about making sure your number line fits. 
So it's going to be easiest if you're copying a print number line that already exists, since you can just use what it, what is there. But if you're making your own number line, like if I tried to do a count by three, it won't let me. Your count by and points do not match. So your math does have to work out for it to for it to do its thing. And there's a lot you can do here. So you can change the interval type, empty circle, full circle. Um, you can change the end of the interval type. You can do points instead of an interval. Uh, you can change um, how fractions appear, whether fractions get reduced. Uh, if you have leading zeros, there's a lot that you can do here. You can add labels. And so what we've tried to do, this, this I think is a good example of what we've tried to do with Braille Blaster in general. So at the very you know, basic level, we've presented it as easily as we possibly can. So this is as easy as we can possibly make it with these text boxes. And then for those who need it, you can dive in deeper to get more complex examples and do more with what is there. But it, the more you do, the more complex it'll get. So start simple, learn about it, get your feet wet, and then do more and more. I'm going to close that. And now the other type, since that's one of our uh, objectives for the day, is the matrices. So for matrices, it's going to be laid out like a table. And then you've got your, this is a three by three table of text boxes. And so I'll just, uh, I'll do X and Y. So X comma Y, I'll just type it out once. And then I'm going to do control C and then control V to paste it into the boxes. So this is a super simple example. Uh, I can change the grouping device. So there's brackets, parentheses, braces, vertical bars, big versions of each of those. I can change the overflow style, which is, you know, kind of, that's one of the uh, rules of Braille. And then I can also change the numbers of rows and columns. So by default, it's three by three, but you can make it up to nine by nine. But I think it eventually is going to complain about whether or not it fits. So you will want to make sure it fits. So now that I've got it filled out, I'll click insert, and I get my matrices. So it's X and Y inside the big braces. And just like before, I can go to settings, translation settings. I'm set for UEB. I can go down to UEB plus Nemeth, click OK, and then it does a quick retranslate, and I get Nemeth. Now there's more you can do here. You can add your Nimeth uh, begin and end symbols. We've put in rules for how those are added. Uh, you can add numeric passages. Uh, there's a lot to math. There's, there's really more than we can cover in a short time. Like you can do numeric series. Um, we've tried to cover everything as much as we can. And we're, we're, this is something we're gonna continue to visit and respond to user needs. So with that, um, let's get to questions before we before we go over our time. I'm gonna open the chat window. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to keep up with the chat window. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, um, I'm realizing that. <laughs> so so uh, you have over two. We have two over 230 people joining us right now, and so I know we will not get to all of these questions, but we've been capturing all of them, and I am sure both William and Sally. If we don't get to your question, we will work on getting those answered and out to you, as well as each other's questions, because we know that that crisscross is happening. So do know that. Um, does Braille Blaster send update notices? Yes. So every time you turn on uh, Braille Blaster, if you have an internet connection, it uh, pings our server just real quick and checks to see if there's an update. So if there's an update, it'll check and it'll tell you, yes, there's an update, go get it. So if they are not connected to the internet, they would have to... You can join our mailing list, okay. uh, which you know also requires the internet or uh, just go to brailleblaster.org periodically to check. Okay. If you want to join our mailing list, those are all, those are all available at um, brailleblaster.org, but one of them is brailleblaster-announce at tech.aph.org. And so each computer just... needs to be updated on its own, correct? It's not going to crisscross unless you have your computers already matched. Uh, it will not update your computer? 
No, I'm saying if you have it on more than one computer. Oh computer yes, computer if you so. yeah, sorry, yes, if you if you have it on more than one computer, you will have to update it individually. You could download it once, put it on a thumb drive, and just take it around if the you know if internet connection was an issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. And each and one then, comes with a local copy of the documentation. We did that because of prison braille programs. A lot of prison braille programs use braille blaster. So you've got a local copy of the documentation. You don't need to access the internet in order to use the, the documentation. Okay. We have lots of questions kind of about your importing when you were in the beginning of moving your text in and out. You answered many of the questions about what can be imported and used. Uh, with your Braille Blaster, there's a few questions regarding Chromebook. Is it able to be loaded onto Chromebook? Not, not at the moment. It's something, it's something we're looking at uh, way, way in the future of trying to do a version that works with Chromebook, but it's not, not at the moment. So right now, Braille Blaster works with Windows, Mac, and Linux. So it's, you've got a lot of options. Chromebook is not at the moment one of them, but it is something we're, we're aware uh, there's a, a need for, so. Okay, and with your uh, ability for your math, you were showing many different graphics. Does it do uh, shapes, uh, like for fraction shapes and that type? Um, or do we need to move over to Sally's portion for that? Yeah, it does not do shapes at the moment. So uh, it's something on our roadmap to, to look at, but for the moment, um, we do not do shapes. Okay. Um, there was a ton of other questions, but I want to let you move on because we have many other things to cover. I have all of your questions, I promise you, and we will work on getting to them. Cool. All right. So for the next part, I am going to start. We're going to use this um, PowerPoint. Uh, we're going to be talking about Page Blaster and Pix Blaster. And for those of you who do not know, have not heard of Page Blaster and Pix Blaster, do not worry. Uh, they have not been released yet. Uh, they are available for pre-order uh, to a EOTs at APH.org. Just search for either Pix Blaster or Page Blaster. They will be releasing this summer. Uh, we're looking at uh, early August. And what are they? They are the first ever um, embossers available on quota brought to us through partnerships with Humanware and View Plus. Page Blaster is Humanware and Pix Blaster is View Plus. So now we're going to get into kind of the whys and hows before we dive into the specifics. So what can you expect? Why Blaster? So these, you know, Blaster, Braille Blaster, Pix Blaster, Page Blaster, why? And it's because Blaster represents a commitment by APH to blast down barriers to Braille. It started as a trumpet blast for Braille readers everywhere. That was the original impetus of the name Braille Blaster. In case I know everyone's been wondering, <laughs> but that was the original impetus was a, a trumpet blast for Braille readers everywhere. Well, now it is for blasting down barriers to Braille. And there's still a lot of barriers to Braille. There's still students that aren't getting their textbooks on the first day of class. There's still students that aren't getting Braille as often as they should. And APH wants to be a part of solving that problem. And the younger a person learns Braille, the more likely they will become a lifelong Braille reader. And Braille literacy is, is key. It's so important. Uh, it's key to understanding spelling, punctuation, grammar, all of which are vital for success. Um, audio is great. Screen readers are great. Uh, audio books are great. I love audio books too. And screen readers, we cannot discount how screen readers have changed the lives of people that are blind everywhere. You know, they've, they've been a part of a revolution of independence and that's amazing. But audio is not a replacement for the written word. You've got to have audio and Braille together uh, to really uh, stretch your brain and, and have all the same muscles working as, as your sighted peers. So there's a, lot, there's a lot of differences between these embossers, but there's also a lot in common. So let's go over some of the things that are in common, what to expect with these embossers. 
So with both, you're going to be getting high quality Braille, tractor fed paper, and interpoint capabilities. So these are both solid Braille embossers that also do graphics. They're also going to be coming with APH documentation. We started with the documentation provided by both of the manufacturers. Uh, we did field testing. We learned what the different pain points were with each embosser. And then we've, we've tailored our, our documentation to the user uh, to make that as easy as possible. I know embossing can be hard. Getting your embosser set up can be hard. And so the documentation is a part of making that as easy as we can. We also are putting out videos for each embossers and the related software. These are short, quick, to the point videos to help you set up and use your embosser uh, to the best of its ability and yours. We also are providing customer support. Um, so from the, you know, the moment you set it up to using it, we will be available with our expertise in the community to help you get going. And these are both available on quota. The cost is uh, $3,995. So they're the same price, whether you get the Pix Blaster or the Page Blaster, they're gonna be the same price. So now I'm gonna dive in to each of the embossers. I don't wanna play favorites, so I'm gonna go alphabetically. And so we will start with Page Blaster. So what is Page Blaster? So this one's uh, through Humanware. It's based on an Index Basic D V5. I have an image of it that I'm sharing right now, and it's it's super sharp looking. It's got uh, uh, really nice looking purple end caps, and then you can sort of make out the uh, the interface. The, there's a lot of buttons that are labeled with Braille on the top of the interface there, which we'll get into. So features, it's got a fully voiced hardware interface. Uh, you can do a whole lot from this interface. Uh, you can update the device, you can get your IP address, you can set, set up your Braille page. There's a lot you can do without, it, without having to turn to a computer or a phone. It's got wireless capabilities, so Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet. It embosses fast, high quality Braille. It has quick embossing solutions through both direct Braille and the Braille app. And it comes with Firebird graphics software. So that's a lot. I'm gonna go through these points uh, bit by bit. So we'll start with the hardware interface. It's fully voiced, has Braille labels and a good layout to easily find what you need. I have a picture of it here. And so, you know, it's basics on, off, uh, feed, and those those are all obvious and everybody should have those buttons. And then also this menu button. So there's menu button, a help button, and then your arrow keys. And with this menu button, you can do a whole lot. You can update the device, set your Braille layout, and it's super easy to get going once you've turned it on and plugged it in. Then it has direct Braille. If you've used an index embosser before, this was formerly known as index direct Braille. They're changing the name to direct Braille. And what this is, is once you install the drivers, so you'll get a little, a little installer that comes with the embosser and go ahead and install that. That's the drivers. Once you install the drivers, you get this index direct Braille added to your context menu. If you have a supported file type, so docx, doc, PDF, or BRF, you just right click on that file or use the context menu key on your keyboard and then find it in the context menu. Here it says index direct Braille. I have an old version. We're updating it to the new version. And that is gonna be just direct Braille. And then that sends that document to the embosser. It's gonna use LibLui, which is the same translation service that Braille Blaster uses. And it's gonna translate and format your document and emboss it. This is a really great way to get a quick, easy translation without opening Braille Blaster or Duxbury or anything like that. Next we have the Braille app. So the Braille app is once you have your, your embosser working wirelessly, so either ethernet or Wi-Fi, get your device's IP address by pressing help plus 10. Uh, I say IP address, that might scare some people. Uh, basically any embosser that you use, if you're gonna use it over the internet, you're gonna need its IP address. So that's just the, the, ad, the, the basically the internet address of the device. And so every embosser has this. Uh, 
the page blaster makes it really easy to get that information because you just press the help button and then the 10 button and then it reads it out to you. So put that, get that IP address, put it into your favorite browser, and then that will bring up the Braille app. So I've done it, I've got a picture of it here from my PC, but you could also do this on your phone. And so from here, you can print documents, change settings, uh, adjust how communication works. You can also open and directly emboss BBZ files from Braille Blaster. There's a lot you can do uh, quickly and easily uh, from a pretty friendly interface. Next, we have Firebird. So it comes with Firebird. Um, this is a graphics program that we're gonna dive into later, but you can use it to create new graphics, open uh, JPEG or PNG files for editing and embossing. You can import PRNs, which is a uh, type of graphics file that Sally's gonna be covering. And then once you've got your file open or you've created something, you can apply filters to sharpen, blur, or invert an image. You can add Braille. There are tools to create shapes like we talked about a bit earlier. So squares, triangles, circles, that sort of thing. And I have a link here to a, uh, there's a really great webinar that already exists. That's about an hour, it's about an hour long. So it's a pretty deep dive. We've got our own video that's gonna cover the basics. That's about five minutes long. But if you watch the five minute video and are, are craving more Firebird, uh, you can watch this uh, hour long webinar to learn everything you need to know about Firebird. All right, so now we'll jump into PixBlaster. So what is PixBlaster? PixBlaster uh, is the View Plus embosser. It is based on a View Plus Columbia 2. The Columbia 2 just came out. The big thing that separates the Columbia 2 from the Columbia and therefore the PixBlaster from the regular Columbia is the new dot technology. So View Plus has introduced this, uh, they're calling it Power Dot Braille. And it's a rounder, uh, better dot. It's not a, there's nothing square about it. It's not a squarish dot. It is a nice round, uh, beautiful dot. So when you get the Pix Blaster, you're gonna be getting everything you need in one box. So it comes with a speaker and it comes with the Pixie. I'm gonna cover what the Pixie is in just a moment. And the Pix Blaster has an easy to use software interface. And a big thing, it's in the name Pix Blaster. A big part of it is high quality tactile graphics, which we're gonna cover. Uh, the new dot technology, and then it works great with software you're already familiar with and comes with Tiger Software Suite. So let's dive into these points quickly. So what is Pixie? It adds wireless capabilities to Pix Blaster. So if you just have a Pix Blaster but no Pixie, I don't know how you got it. I don't know if you bought a bootleg Pix Blaster, but if you have a Pix Blaster without a Pixie, you do not have Bluetooth or Ethernet. So having the Pixie gives you the Bluetooth and, um, or excuse me, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It also gives you access to the Pixie interface. So the Pixie interface, this is similar to the Braille app on the Page Blaster. But this uh, is a place where you can emboss documents, you can adjust settings. Like one of the big things uh, you'll wanna do through the Pixie interface is go in and you can set your braille quality. By default, it'll just be normal, but you can set it to best mode and you can set your graphics quality to best mode and it'll emboss slower, but with a higher quality. Um, but there's a lot of settings in there and we've got a video about um, what you can do through the Pixie interface just like we do for the Braille app. So graphic embossing. So you can emboss a graphic from a JPEG or a PNG using Photos, which is a standard, standard Windows app. So you can basically open that JPEG, go up to uh, File, Print, and then print it to the Pix Blaster, and it will interpret that image. Now, that's not necessarily what you should do, <laughs> because just because, just because a picture looks good doesn't mean it's gonna make a good graphic. So just because you have a good picture doesn't mean it's gonna make a good graphic. So you might wanna open it in Tiger Designer to edit it. So you can emboss PDFs from Adobe, which we'll cover later. So you can get the PDF from uh, the Tactile Graphics Image Library and emboss that. Or you can open things up in Tiger Designer for image editing, emboss PRNs and create new graphics. And it also has fill patterns, shape tools, 
and the option to adjust the density. A lot of people have probably heard of Tiger Software Suite, but it comes with Quick Paw, which is new apparently, and it's a neat six and eight key tool that just, it basically allows you to six key everywhere. So you can six key in Word, six key in your browser, and can be useful if you, um, if you are really good at six keying. It's also plugins for Excel and Word that make it easy to emboss from those, um, from those uh, programs. And you can generate and edit graphics with uh, Tiger Designer. So that's a whole lot. And we'll go, we'll go over some questions if folks have questions. But know that as these are coming out, we've got an ACB segment that covers some of this information. We've got videos, uh, I think seven videos coming out for PixBlaster and six, I think, videos coming out for uh, Page Blaster. So we've got videos coming out on each of these topics. So folks will be able to watch them and make an informed decision about which one they, they might want. But shall we get to questions before we turn it over to Sally? for the Tactile Graphics Image Library. Okay. I was muted. Jim, will you uh, throw some <laughs> of those questions at him and I'll put the chat out. <laughs> okay. All right. So, okay. so William, one of these questions re revolves around, I think, direct Braille and the profiles that you're setting up for direct Braille. So if you had a particular student in mind that was, um, let's say you had three students, could you create a profile for each student using direct Braille uh, to meet the, the needs of the student and the, uh, the, the level of Braille that they were, they were competent at? Yes. So you're able to set these Braille profiles for each of the students. You probably know more about this than I do, Jim. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you're able to set your different profiles, your different page setups, and then switch between them as needed. And would and would uh, Braille Blaster be uh, uh, also? Would that be possible with Braille Blaster again, creating a profile in Braille Blaster for a particular student? Let's call him. Let's call him Ted. Yeah. So that's something where you can do, but not as well as we would want. So that's something we're working on making better, and we're 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 working on adding profiles so it'll be for students or for agencies. So if you're a transcriber, you could have an NLS profile and an APH profile. So as you're producing work for different agencies, you can just switch between them. But right now it's, you can sort of do it, but it's not that great. And so there's nothing, there's nothing to brag about right now, but there will be. All right, so we'll do one more and then we'll do the poll question. And that is, uh, can, can these embossers uh, work with a Chromebook? And then would they also be able to be used with a, a Braille note taking device, like, a, like say like a Braille sense or a Braille note? Yes, so the, um, the Page Blaster can work with a Braille display. I have not tried the Pix Blaster and I'm not familiar if it can work with a Braille display. I'll You're talking about that. Braille mm -hmm. note taker versus display. Right, yeah, note taker, correct. Okay. Um, and, so yeah, and the camera. About Chrome. Mm -hmm. And so both through their interfaces, so the Pixie interface, you could use a Chromebook, you could use a phone, basically anything that can access a web page, you can use the Pixie interface. And that's with the Pix Blaster. And the same for the Page Blaster through the Braille app. Super, okay. All right, so there's some other questions that are sitting out there, but what we'll do is we'll get, take those offline and get those off to you. And uh, Leanne, I'm going to kick it to you for the first of a few poll questions and then off to Sally. Get ready, Sally. Okay, I put two poll questions in this one together. What image are you using most often? What are you creating or using most often? Your choices are grids, shapes, US maps, world maps, human anatomy, other, and if you pick other, put your other in the chat. What image are you using most often? And then the second question is, how are you making your tactile graphics now? Are you using collage? And that could be with or without a thermoform machine. Are you using micro capsule swell paper? Are you using a high resolution embosser? Sorry, I forgot the ER in that. And if so, what high resolution embosser are you using right now? And then again, other. If 
we didn't name it, how are you making your tactile graphics? And tell us in the chat. So things I'm seeing are graphs, shapes and collages, the tiger, uh, star formations, constellations, astronomy images, the index, the Everest, um, animals, creatures, labyrinths, marine science, using the Juliet, using puff paint, handmade various materials of a tactile graphic kit, the carousel of textures and the tactile grid paper, swell paper, wiki sticks, a 3D printer pen, mostly STEM graphics. So let's see what you wrote in the, or selected in the chat, but you can, you're welcome to keep putting them in there so that we know what we were seeing in the poll is 43% is shapes and then just little bits and pieces everywhere else. So shapes is a, a large portion of what you are making and then how you are making them. We have 37% collage, uh, 23 micro cell, micro capsule swell paper, 12 high resolution embosser, 28% other in the chat. That kind of gives you an idea, Sally, of where everybody is at. That's great. Yes. Um, hello. And um, first, I just want to give you an overview of what the Tactile Graphic Image Library is. And uh, the Tactile Graphic Image Library provides access to a wide variety of image templates free of charge. These quality images can be used by anyone, teachers, transcribers, parents, and students to create standalone tactile graphics or graphics designed to supplement existing material. The TTIL website offers quick free registration. After establishing an account, you have access to over 1,900 print images. Some images are complete graphics, including braille labels, but most simply provide a great starting point for you to create custom tactile graphics. You can and should adapt each page to fit your need and edit them to make a readable raised image that can be ran on high resolution embossers, used with capsule paper and fuser machines, and with the collage method. To access APH's library, go to imagelibrary.aph.org. The current viewing screen shows the login page. If this is your first time to the site, you will need to fill out this short registration form. Pull that up. Um, be sure to scroll to the bottom and check this box right down here at the bottom. Um, if you check the box at the bottom of the registration, it signs you up for emails. This allows you access to quarterly news of added assets and other tactile graphic related information, such as this webinar. Use the back arrow. And I'm gonna go ahead and log in here real quick. The Read Me First document. This is an important page. It always is good to be reminded that a tactile graphic is not an exact reproduction of the print image. It is the transcriber's job to provide the equivalent information as in print. No print graphic should be routinely omitted if the image provides useful information to the sighted reader. The same should be provided to the tactile reader. It is vital for the transcriber to understand what the image is trying to convey and how to adapt it to make the same information available to the Braille reader. There are resources out there to help and we are one of them. Let's enter the library and explore this free resource. Welcome to the TGIL. As we navigate this user-friendly site, think about your tactile graphic experience. What type of graphics do you find yourself doing most of, as in the poll question? Is it math figures, grids, maps, or outlines? Keep those past and current images in mind today and you should see how the tactile graphic image library can work for you. All of the categories uh, follow the core and expanded core curriculum. 
Notice the category listing on your left. And be sure to scroll all the way down to the bottom to see the full list. You should not be surprised that the most used categories are social studies. There's your social studies. Science. Some more science. And mathematics. After you have selected a category, you are able to browse the images in this list type format. This is a great way to browse the library to see what's available to you. For a more specific search, type a keyword in the search bar field at the top. The number one downloaded image from the TGIL is cell, animal cell. All the images that have been tagged with the word cell that I typed in the bar will appear. To select a specific image, uh, you will either need to click on the thumbnail or the first uh, entry listed if you're using a screen reader is the item to follow that will take you to the download link. And I will just select the thumbnail. This download page uh, simply shows you an enlarged image of the asset you selected. The amount of lines and colors and labels and other details an image has, the more tactically complex it is. Biology illustrations tend to be very complex and oftentimes three-dimensional. A 3D image requires visual perception to understand and visual and tactile uh, perception are very different. Certain visual properties such as a cross-section cutaway that are used many times in textbooks to show an animal cell or layers of the earth um, have no meaning in tactile representation. The transcriber must modify the animal cell to a top view 2D image for the same information to be understood. Making a complex image readable is done by simplification, elimination, distortion, and separation. All of the necessary design methods to change and to change from 3D to 2D has been done for you in this image. Below the image, you have options of the first button is returning back to your list. The middle button is you can instantly download the image by selecting the download image button in the middle or you can add it to the cart and this feature allows you to collect as many images as you would like, storing them and later downloading in a convenient zip folder. After downloading a PDF, you can edit the file in any commercial vector drawing software program such as Corel Draw or Illustrator or a free drawing program like Inkscape or Get Paint. That is the purpose of the Tactile Graphic Image Library. The American Printing House for the Blind provides the free downloadable, editable template file and you customize and change as needed. The last feature I want to highlight are the four different types found in the Tactile Graphic Image Library. Up top, I'm going to go to the 3D category. The very first category contains 3D files. And what you will find in this category are free APH replacement parts in the STL format. STL standing for stereolithography, a common 3D file type. And these files are ready to run, no changes needed. Now I'm going to go uh, to a subcategory under art, which is digital white box artwork. And these are PNG files, which can be found in the digital light box artwork category. They are raster file types, which means they're pixel by pixel, but as a coloring page, they're gonna do just fine for you or your student or however you need to use it. Um, PDF, a file type uh, that most are familiar with is the bulk of the 1,900 images stored in the library. Um, as I said before, you can edit these in drawing software programs such as Word, Inkscape, Corel, Illustrator, 
These programs also allow you to save your work as PRNs. And I'm going to go to the very bottom. And that leads us to the last file type. Once um, these are for that, well, the category is called Tiger and Phoenix Embosser files. Once the PRN is downloaded, it can be opened in either the Firebird or the Tiger Designer software. Customization can and should be made to these files. Both the Firebird software and the Tiger Designer software allow you to add textures, lines, point symbols, and braille, the four fundamentals of any graphic. PRN stands for Printer Ready Network, a set of specific instructions for a specific printer. Um, to print the library's PRN, say using the Pix Blaster, simply select the Save As option inside the Designer software and select the APH embosser. If you're changing printers, you may also need to change your design elements to best suit the printer you are using. That is a quick run through of the Tactile Graphic Image Library. Again, you can reach this resource at imagelibrary.aph.org. Sally, can you sign up if you are an international TVI? Absolutely. The uh, Tactile Graphic Image Library is free to anyone everywhere. We actually, I think I did a count and I believe we're at, I don't want to get the number wrong, either 80 or 90 countries and territories. So that's really awesome. So yes, wherever you are, come on in and download for free. Okay. If you have an index embosser, is there software needed to to be added to use the tactile library? With the um, index embosser, it should have come with uh, the designing software program. Um, oh, top quiz. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, but, um, but yes, you, you can use it with all of the programs. Okay. And are you able to get images that are already embossed? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> But that, but this is the perfect, um, you can use the tactile graphic image library no matter your um, method. If you wanted to, if, if all you had access to was collage, you could use these images, print it out on a regular printer, and you already have the outline if you're going to have to use a spur wheel or string, however you want to do it. And then um, check around. Maybe you have access that you're not even knowing that you have. So check with your local resource material if you're a TBI. Okay, I'm trying to see, did I miss any? I answered some in the chat that were ones I could answer. Did you see any others, Jim, that we weren't able to, to grab? No, I, I mean, I think some of them we, we take we take offline and we do a little research with, uh, with yeah. William to confirm. Yeah, you had some really great questions, but I think we're getting into some, some pretty deep information. Uh, so I want to ask you a question. So a majority of you are here because we're talking about making these things. So we actually want to know, what do you like to transcribe the least? Is it the front matter of a book? Is it the special symbols page of a book? Is it the glossary? Is it mathematics? And that's a catch all, any mathematics. Is it the table of contents? Or is it other? While you're doing that, um, if someone gets a null when they're searching for an image, what might happen? What, what, what does that mean, Sally? Um, sometimes that either means that you have been logged in too long and been inactive and so it'll kind of kick you out. Um, other times if you are just registering, um, maybe it didn't recognize your email. Um, if you have any sort of problems, and I apologize for that, there is a contact button and that will lead you to tgfeedback at aph.org and um, just reach out to us, tell us, um, tell us if you are having any sort of technical difficulty or if you have any ideas for the library. 
We also take, um, if you just are fantastic at electronic drawing and you see an image that may be the library you think the library should add, also use the contact button and uh, we'll get back with you and work with you because we wanna make as many great downloadable images as possible. Okay, and are there any foreign language supports in there or is it all English? Um, I believe it's all English, um, but again, contact us if, if you need help and we will do our best to, to get you exactly what you need. Okay, we're seeing lots of people that are saying all of the above, <laughs> um, which is okay, but for the poll itself, 58% are saying mathematics and 22% the special symbols page and just a little bit of everything else. And uh, another person is saying actually making pictures make sense to the blind user, which in and of itself is its own webinar, I will say. <laughs> it is definitely its own webinar, which we can work on putting together. Um, is there any other questions that we can um, ask Sally and then William, I'll grab you again and see if they have something specific that we might be able to cover. So I just like to, to clarify the page sizes on the Pix and Page Blaster. They will work with eight and a half by 11 and 11 and a half by 11 pages. And I had dropped into the chat. Uh, they do sort of drop to a little bit below um, those traditional sizes and a little bit above, but those two traditional sizes are covered. Um, I think we can transition for the last 15 minutes over to William now to talk a little bit about Firebird and uh, Tiger Designer. Sounds good. You ready, William? Yep. Awesome. So I'm sharing my screen now, and I've already got Firebird open. And Firebird, uh, Firebird comes with the Page Blaster. So if you get the Page Blaster, you will also get Firebird. And I've got a new version of Firebird that hasn't been released yet, because uh, I'm special. I'm just kidding. You'll get it as well. And it's got APH Page Blaster ready to go. So if you already are a Firebird user, you won't yet have Page Blaster as a, as a possible choice. But you can use Firebird to open image files, import PRNs, which Sally talked about, or create new graphics. So I'll start by just, I'm going to, it's kind of a blank screen at the moment. I've got my source image on the left and my page image on the right. So it'll be, this is the image you opened, and then this is the Braille on the right. Well, I'm going to click Edit. And then that's going to give me a blank canvas to get started. And I'm going to zoom in to make that a little easier to look at. And I've turned on the grid. There's a grid you can turn on. And then there's all sorts of tools here on the left that I can use. By default, you're going to start with the line tool. And so if I just click and drag, it creates a line. And then when I release, it gives me a line of Braille dots. Well, of dots. And I can change, there's a menu item, pin styles. So by default, it's just going to be one dot, but you can go two, three, four dots. I'll go three dots, make another line. Um, I am uh, not an artist, which is uh, at this point, I think as obvious as saying I'm not a cat, but I've got my uh, horizontal line and now I'm making a vertical line. And so, you know, I'm trying to make a bar graph. I'm not doing a great job, but I'm just giving an example of what can be done with just the line tool. And so there's also shape tools. So you could make a circle or a square just by activating the tool and then dragging your mouse. It's a pretty mouse centric uh, program overall can use that to make uh, triangles. And you can also make individual dots. If you get paid by the hour, it's a good way to make graphics. Just add each dot individually. There's also a fill tool. So you can pick uh, different types of fills. So having picked the fill tool, I can make a uh, square and then it fills it with the texture uh, that I selected. You can also add Braille labels. So clicking that opens up a separate little dialog. And then you're going to want to type the exact translation. So I put uh, comma, comma, APH. And then that gives me my capital indicator, my two capital indicators, and then APH. 
So that's just kind of how you can edit, you know, some of the ways you can edit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this, um, but I'll go ahead and open an image file mm -hmm. now. So I'll open the chance, APH. Was this an image file that you got through the tactile graphics library? This isn't, but I will open, I will open a, a file from the tactile graphics image library. Okay. So this is just a JPEG of the APH logo. I don't know why you would want to emboss it, but just an example of how it converts an image into dots that you can then emboss. And then you can open this for editing. So go ahead and open it for editing and then you could make any changes. And now this is a pretty high res, simple image. So it opens really cleanly, but just to give you an example of a lower resolution image, this is the Braille Blaster logo. And this would, if you were going to emboss this, you would need to then go in and clean it up. And so you, you could start from this image and then you would need to fill in places where it didn't know to put dots. And you could just do that manually using the, the same tools that we started with. So these, these aren't your typical images. These are just examples, just to give you an idea of how that works. So if I go to File, Import PRN, I can then, I've got my TGIL folder. I can then pick a PRN from the Tactile Graphics Image Library. So like I've got here, it's the world map. And not every PRN will open in Firebird, but uh, most of them should open and you can go ahead and just open them. And then once you've got them open, you can then edit them or make changes. And when you're happy with what you've got, you go to file, emboss, and then emboss your graphic. So that is kind of just a quick rundown of Firebird. Like I said, we've got a video coming out about Firebird that goes into more detail. And there's also that hour long uh, webinar that covers Firebird as well. So now I'm going to open Tiger Designer. And I'll admit too, I am a transcriber by training. Sally is more of the, the tactile graphic artist, definitely more of the tactile graphic artist in that she is a tactile graphic artist. Uh, so my, my domain is definitely um, Braille more than graphics, but I know enough uh, to be dangerous. So this is Tiger Designer. Again, you can use Tiger Designer to make graphics from scratch. So there's a line tool that it's a good way to make your uh, straight lines rather than trying to draw them by hand. And there's also shape tools. So you can make squares and circles. You can also fill them in by selecting your textures. So like I, there's a texture pattern fill up here and I can go ahead and fill in patterns on the shapes that I open. You can also go ahead and do a filled oval or a filled square. There's a lot of tools here. It's fun to play around with and it's definitely something you would want to familiarize yourself with. And you can also open uh, PRNs. I'm not going to save. So that same PRN. And now that I've got it open, I could use the fill tool to go through and add texture to the different land masses to maybe help make those easier to find uh, for the student than just leaving them blank. Now, so this is Tiger Designer, which is just part of the Tiger Software Suite. And the key thing to remember here, so this is a PRN. So there is a section of the Tactile Graphics Image Library that is just PRNs. And then the rest of the things in the Tactile Graphic Image Library are going to be PDFs. And so I'm going to go ahead and open. So this is a PDF from the Tactile Graphics Image Library. If you have the Pix Blaster, you can emboss this graphic on the Pix Blaster. Now there's color and you know some texture to this graphic, and the Pix Blaster is going to do its best to handle that. You may need to add embellishments to finalize it, but you can emboss this on your Pix Blaster. Here's another one. This is a so that last one was the butterfly life cycle. So you've got the butterfly starting as an egg becoming a caterpillar and then uh, the pupa in, in, into the adult. And then this next one is a uh, automotive backhoe. 
And then that also has texture. This is going to emboss really well on the Pix Blaster. And show another example. This is a detailed map of Ohio. And like some of the real detailed stuff, like the triangles or these railroad lines, you may need to add embellishments to get those to really come through. But I think you're going to have a pretty good start with the Pix Blaster embossing these kinds of PDFs. So that's some of the different options for embossing graphics. You've got PRNs on either embosser and then PDFs on the Pix Blaster. So Pix is in the name because it is more of a graphics embosser, though they, they both do Braille. All right. Were there any questions with the time that we have left on either uh, Tiger Designer or Firebird, or was there anything uh, else that maybe we didn't didn't cover yet? Um, so uh, both of these are the uh, the ones on the new embossers coming to APH. Yes. So Tiger Designer, the Tiger Software Suite comes with any View Plus embosser. So if you order an embosser from View Plus, you'll get the Tiger Software Suite. And Pix Blaster, being a View Plus embosser, is also going to come with the Tiger Software Suite. Um, Page Blaster is based on an Index Basic uh, DV5, which ordinarily does not come with Firebird and does not ordinarily work with Firebird, um, but it does work with Page Blaster. And how? And can you design different heights for tactile elements? That's something you can do more with Pix Blaster than Page Blaster. I will need to look into that more. Again, I'm not a a graphics person. The, the I different, the, I'm yeah. sorry, William. Thank the you. different, yes, the different heights um, are controlled by the color. It works on grayscale. So the highest, of course, is going to be your solid black, and then it will go down to, of course, nothing being white. Thank you. Yes. Okay. We had one more question for all of you that we did want to know. Um, how do you share Braille most often? Are you sharing the actual paper documents? Or are you actually sharing electronic files? And this question could have actually been a very different result as well um, if I had asked it about six months ago. So how are you sharing Braille most often? Is it through a paper document that you're sending back and forth or are you sending electronic files? Again, if you can't access the poll, you're welcome to put in the chat how you share Braille most often. I'll give that a second, just so that you know, we have well over 200 members in joining us today. I am going to stop and share those results. You are telling us still 83% of you are actually sharing that paper document and only 17% that electronic file. So that lets us know that you're actually doing quite a bit of paper shuffling still right now. Go ahead, take it away. Yeah. Um, I mean, it just goes to show that there's still a lot that paper can do that electronic Braille cannot. Like uh, we're still kind of waiting on the, the holy grail of electronic Braille, which is a, a solid uh, multi-line Braille display. All right. Um, were there any other questions that we wanted to get to? We had the weight. We had the the resources supporting print with Braille. And I don't think either of these are supporting a print with Braille at the moment. Right. Um, other ones really about an, a whole completely different webinar of how to teach um, and graphics and we'll work on trying to organize that uh, that discussion to happen because that is a, a whole different game um, than just making them. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any others. Can you add just, braille labels? Using ti yeah, using Tiger Designer, William. Can you add braille labels using Tiger Designer? Yeah. It's going to be similar to uh, um, in the Firebird. So you select the Braille label tool, and then you, you type out the exact Braille that you're going to want. You can change your font type and your orientation. And so I'll just do the APH logo. And then the cool thing, once you've typed it out, you can then move it around and get it where you want it. The one thing I'll say, though, is once you place it, it, it does become a little harder to move. So you want to get it where you want it. So I've typed out APH, and then you click, and then that places it there. So I put it over America. 
So, the, so there's one here I'm going to try to interpret. It says, are all the electronic files require the student to have their own embosser? Do any of these tools have meaning in refreshable Braille setup? So I think that would really apply to Braille Blaster. Using yeah, Braille Blaster, Blaster. With, a, with a BRF. So Braille Blaster can save a BRF and you can then share that BRF with your student. Uh, something I call out a lot in my Braille Blaster presentation is uh, Project Gutenberg. So Project Gutenberg is a website. It's not an APH website, but it's free. So just uh, search for Project Gutenberg and it is free um, public domain EPUBs. So this is Moby Dick, Alice in Wonderland, Frankenstein, um, all sorts of older books, classics, that you can then get the EPUB, open that EPUB in Braille Blaster, and if it's for casual reading, you can open it in Braille Blaster, save it, and send it to your student. If you're gonna be asking them questions, having homework, things like that, spend some time, and with l less than 30 minutes, you can have a quality Braille document, an entire novel, for free to send to your student. So that's something we cover in our, our big Braille Blaster uh, presentation. And if, if you're interested in more Braille Blaster training, you can contact us at it's bb-support at tech.aph.org. And we can send that uh, through the, the chat there. Un yeah, thank you. Um, are all, do all of these um, products that we mentioned have auditory and voiceover access? Braille Blaster is fully accessible. Um, Tiger Designer and Firebird are, because of their graphic nature, are going to be more mouse heavy. And so even if the, your screen reader does work with them, you're not necessarily going to get a lot out of them, at least as far as creating and editing graphics. Uh, but Braille Blaster is fully accessible. So uh, if you're on Windows, JAWS and NVDA are definitely the recommended uh, screen readers there. Uh, and then on Mac, of course, uh, VoiceOver. And the best way to use Braille Blaster for accessibility is having a Braille display, because then you can get the actual Braille from the Braille view rather than relying on it, because it's going to read the ASCII um, instead of, you know, giving you the exact Braille. So that really is the best way. Okay, well, we have held everyone's attention for an hour and a half. I thank you for joining us today. And, and thank you so much, William and Sally, for a great presentation. Learned quite a bit. Thanks to you all. This has been great. Yes, thanks.